Gathering data should be an intuitive and user-friendly process, ensuring clarity when entering information and making it simple to submit reports that maintain all records in order. We encounter digital forms daily, whether for student registration, event bookings, visa applications, or driver's license renewals. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to create and automate a user-friendly form using dynamic array functions, reverse checkbox, picture lookup, data validation, a mixed macro recording, and lots of tips and tricks along the way. A submit button will only appear once all form fields are completed. With a single click, all data is added to a comprehensive report that keeps all records organized. This is a complete course on automating a data entry form. It comes in two parts. This is part A. You can download the start file and follow along by clicking on the link below the video. In part B of the course, you can download the finished steps of part A along with a step-by-step -step manual to help you build any form. Let's dive into the finished project. Here is my finished form. This is a corporate training form from the Office Instructor Training Center. Corporate clients need to fill this form to request a corporate training course. The gray cells indicate the required data. So I'm going to enter a sample record. I select the date for the required course from a drop list. So let's say it's the 15th of December. 2024. I specify the number of participants for the course from another drop list. Let's say I want 15. And then I need to enter an address, a city, a state, a country, and a zip code. I then enter an email. When I select a cell for entering a phone number, an input message tells the user what to avoid, bracket, space, and dash. So the user just types the number. When I click outside, the number is formatted. I select a course from a drop list, let's say Power Query course. The delivery will be virtual or in person. I select a virtual delivery. Do you want the session to be recorded? Then I select yes or no. I'll be selecting yes. How would you like to pay for that? For the payment method, we have three options. I select direct deposit. And now I finished entering all the fields. Then I have to answer the question, did you fill up all the fields? And when I select yes from a drop list, two things will happen. There is a checkbox that works in reverse order. We don't check the box manually. This is a reverse checkbox that indicates that all the fields have been completed. At the same time, we need a button to submit the form. This button doesn't exist. It pops up whenever you select yes. So when I hit yes, here is the reverse checkbox and the submit button pops up. I hit the submit button and automatically the record has been transferred to the report worksheet where we collect all records and it has been added to the end of the list. When you look at the form, all the fields are cleared in preparation for collecting another record. Let's build this project from ground up in Excel. You can download the exercise file and the step-by-step -step guide by clicking on the link below this video. I start my project by sketching the form on a sheet of paper. I write down all the desired field and I adjust the layout of my form the way I like. Once I'm satisfied with the look of the form on a sheet of paper, then I switch to Excel. In a new blank Excel file, I renamed the worksheet form. All what I did in this worksheet is that I adjusted the width of the column and the height of the rows to suit the fields that I sketched on my paper. In cell C2, I want to type a title, corporate training form. And then in cell C3, I type fill up the form to request the corporate training. In cell C4, I type you will receive a code by email after submitting the form. And in cell C5, 
I type the submit button appears only when you provide all answers. My next step will be typing all the field labels. So I type company, first name, and last name in row number six. In cell C8, I type date. In cell J8, I type participants. And then in cell C11, I type address, and then city, state, and all the labels. I select the range from C2 to L28, and I add a thick outer border for the form. I then select the range from C2 down to L5, and I add a thick bottom border. Now I start formatting the label. I select the range from C2 to I2, and I hit Ctrl-1 to open the Format Cell dialog box. On the Alignment tab, under Horizontal Alignment, I select Center Across Selection, and then I hit OK. I will bump up the font, and then I bold it. I make it blue. That's the main title of the form. And then I select the text in row number 3, and I bold it. Fill out the form to request Corporate Training Course. And then I select cell C5, and in the formula bar, I want to bold the word submit. I double click on it, and I bold it. I then want to insert the company logo. Then I go to the Insert tab. I click on Pictures, Picture over Cell from this device. I navigate to the folder, and I select the logo. I can move, I can adjust, I can resize the logo. Then I select all the range where I have the title from C2 to L5. And I want to change the color, the fill color, and I want to make it gray. I will also help the user where to provide the input values. Then I select the cells where I should be collecting information. I can press Ctrl to select multiple non adjacent cells. And I change the fill color to gray. In cell C9, I want to guide the user to the date format, and the date will be selected from a drop list in row number 10. Then I type letter D and the down pointing arrow. I use the shortcut Alt31, and then I want the month, I type M, and the shortcut Alt31, and finally the year. I can go to the View tab and hide the grid lines by taking the check away from grid lines. And this is the appearance of my form. It matches the design I sketched on a sheet of paper. In my next step, I will be creating eight drop lists and a data validation rule. I will create a drop list for the day, the month, and the year. I will create a drop list for selecting the number of participants, and then another drop list for the course selection, for the recording, for the payment, and the yes or no drop list for the question, did you fill up all the fields? Before I create the drop list, I want to add an outer border to this cell, so I select it and I apply an outer border. In preparation for creating all the drop lists, I created some sequence functions so in column T, I created a sequence function equals sequence 31 that returns sequential numbers from 1 to 31, and then a sequence function for the month, a sequence function for the year. I specified the first year to be 2010, and I have 50 years. I also created in column X a list of courses. This is just a sample list of courses offered by the office instructor. We offer over 50 different courses, and then in column S, I created the different items for the payment drop list. I'm going to use this data for creating my different data validation drop list. I start by selecting the drop list for the day. I use the shortcut Alt-DL, or I go to the data tab and I click on data validation. Tab, L tab, and in the source box, I reference the first sequence function in cell T3. To be able to copy it to the right, I hit F4 three times. And because it says spilled array, then I use the spilled array symbol, Shift 3 on my keyboard, and then I hit OK. 
Now, if I check, I would have created the date drop list. I can copy it to the right for the month and for the year. I select fill without formatting. I don't want the border. For the participants, I can create a drop list using the numbers for the day. Alt D L, tab L tab. And then I want to reference cell T3 and I type the spill that I symbol, shift three on the keyboard. I hit okay and here is the drop list for the participants. And then I want to create a drop list for the course selection. I go to the data tab of the ribbon. I click on data validation. I want to create a list. I put my blinking cursor in the source box and then I navigate to the list of courses. I select it and then I hit OK. The next drop list will be for the payment. Alt D L tab L tab. I select the three options for the payment. All these options will be hidden by the end of the project. I hit OK and I would have created the drop list I want. I still have two more drop lists to create for the recording. I hit Alt D L tab L tab and I type yes, comma no. I hit OK and I want to create the same drop list for the question did you fill up all the fields Alt D L tab L tab and I type yes or no. So let's test the drop list. Let's say for the day, I select the 8th of November 2024. For the number of participants, I can type, let's say, 15. For the course selection, I can select any course, Excel Advanced. And then for the recording, I can say yes. For the payment, I select credit card. Did you fill up all the fields? No, I didn't. Then I select no, and all the drop lists are working. I also want to create a data validation for the phone number in a way that the user can only type digits. So I select cell H6, I hit Alt D L, I select text length, and I want it to be equal to 10, the 10 digits including the three digits for the area code, and for the length I type 10. For the input message, I want to guide the user what to provide. So I can type for the title, 10 digits required. And for the input message, type the area code and number without bracket, space, or dash. Finally, for the error message, I type no brackets, space, or dash allowed. I hit OK. And now I have the input message. I can select this cell and format it as phone number. Then I hit Control-1. I select the special category. And from the special category, I select phone number. I hit OK, and that's fine. So I can test it by typing any number. And when I hit Enter, the number is formatted as a phone number. I want to merge some cells for the company. In row number 7, I select the range from C7 to F7. And then I click on the Merge command, and I want to left align. I do the same for the address, for the country, for the email, the same exact thing. And I will do it for the course selection and the payment as well. My next step will be adding the option buttons and the reverse checkbox. To do that, I need the developer tab of the ribbon. If you don't have the developer tab, you can right click on any tab, select customize the ribbon, and then check the box for developer. Once you hit OK, the developer tab will be added. On the Developer tab in the Controls group, I click on the down arrow for the Insert command, and I click on Option button. I want to create two option buttons from which the user can select either a virtual delivery or an in-person delivery. Then I click to position the first option button. I want to right-click to remove the extra text because I already added text in column F and in column H. So I right click on the option button, edit text. I hit the delete to delete the text and I just leave the option button. I deselect the option button and then press control and click on it to reposition it. And then I want to copy it. Then I press control and drag to copy it for the second choice, which is in person. 
After creating the two option buttons, I want to align them perfectly. I press Ctrl to select both of them. And on the shape format, I click on the down arrow for align. And let's say I align middle. These two option buttons should be linked to a cell. So I select any one of the two option buttons. By pressing Ctrl, I right click and select Format Control. The Format Control dialog box opens. I put my blinking cursor in the cell link and I want to link to cell N17. I hit OK and now I want to test the two option buttons. When I select in person, I see number 2 in N17. But when I select virtual, I see number 1. So these two option buttons change the number in cell N17. My next step is to add a checkbox. The normal behavior of a checkbox is you can either click on it to check it or click on it to uncheck it. What I want to do is a reverse checkbox. When I type some text or select an option, I want the checkbox to be checked or unchecked. I select cell C24, and then I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon. I click on Checkbox, and I would have added a checkbox. My next step is to apply a conditional formatting to this cell. So I want the checkbox to turn red if the answer to the question in cell G24 is no. And I want it to turn green and appear checked if the answer to the question in cell G24 is yes. And to do that, with cell C24 selected, I go to the Home tab of the ribbon, I click on Conditional Formatting, New Rule. Use a formula, and then here I'll be writing my formula. I click on cell G24, and I say if it's equal to no, in double quotation, I type no, then in this case, I want the formatting to be red. I click on Format, I go to the Font tab, and I select the red color. And I hit OK. And another OK. And I would have created the first rule, and you can see the checkbox appearing in red. I want to create a second rule. I click on Conditional Formatting, and then I select Manage Rule. I want to duplicate this rule, then I select it, and I click on Duplicate Rule. I want to edit the duplicate version of the rule. I click on Edit Rule, and here I change the note to Yes in double quotation, and then I click on the Format button, and this time I want it to be green. I hit OK, and another OK, and a third OK. Now I want to test. I want to switch from No to Yes. When I click on Yes, it turns green, but it's not checked. Later, when I create functions, it will be checked as well. In part A of the project, we created the form design along with drop list, checkbox, and option buttons. In part B, we create the functionality of the automated form and reverse checkbox. We add a submit button that appears only when the form is completed. And we record a very special mixed macro then we protect and test the form. If you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.